Hi there, I'm Pete Scargill and today we're going to take a look at a function generator or rather the FieldTech dual channel function slash arbitrary waveform generator model 6600-50M and here's the box yes so let's have a look inside uh, there was some bubble wrap uh, outside of this, the packaging. So it has taken a bit of a bash there, but I'm hoping it hasn't done any harm. Opening the box is a bit more bubble wrap. Inside there is a, a card in Chinese from FieldTech. Not really too much use unless you speak Chinese. There's a mains lead, which came as a bit of a shock. It's um, an American mains lead, but I can easily chop that off and put a proper British lead on. It's a fairly standard connector. You get USB as always and a couple of uh, BNC to um, crocodile clip leads and a, a BNC to BNC as well. So let's open the, uh, the thing up. There it is. It has a nice feel to it. Um, it's extremely light. I mean, no weight at all. Um, just take that off. The buttons are touch buttons, but they feel okay. Everything uh, feels, you know, reasonably good. Uh, the button on the right is a two-purpose job. You can press it in as well as turn it. I guess I'll fix that lead. Right, here we are. Got the thing plugged into mains. Got my handy O01 uh, uh, scope next to it. And uh, as you can see, I've lifted the unit up. It has a little handle underneath for sitting on the bench. So there's a, um, on the front, you have an on-off switch, but that's just, um, you know, it's not a real on-off switch, like on a phone, I guess. Uh, the real on-off switch is around the back. So let's have a look around the back and see what we've got around there. Nothing on the sides, no extra connectors on the base. There's This is the 50 meg part number here. There are other variations on this, which are lower price. So in the back, we have a couple of trigger inputs, power, uh, on off switch, USB to the PC. And a TTL output, which I'm not really sure about yet. Um, and then a uh, signal um, clock in. Really light. So I'll turn it on. We get a welcome with a version number, etc. And we're straight into operation. So you'll notice this is a uh, two uh, output. Uh, they're independent from each other. Just so happen to have that handy lead there. And I'll plug the thing into my scope. And as you see, a sine wave out. Um, battery backup wise, when you turn the power off at the back, any setting changes you make are lost. So use the switch at the front. The top left button there lets you change waveforms and there are just an unfeasible number of waveforms in there. Square wave, obviously, you're going to get all the standard waveforms, plus some you might not imagine. Um, you can change frequency, output voltage. The frequency goes from naught right up to 50 meg. Um, I wouldn't expect too much precision up at the very top end, uh, other than po possibly the sine wave. The setting of frequency is just goes to ridiculous to the nth degree. You can go up a meg at a time, uh, a kilo at a time, right down to a fraction um, of a hertz per per operation. So you've got ridiculous level of control there. Um, same with voltage. You can go in 0 0.001 volt steps from nothing all the way up to 20 volts output. I did note that when you're adjusting the settings, that big round button on the right, if you press it in, it goes back to default settings, which is handy. 
and you change the precision of, of, of change with the two buttons under that round control on the right. So there's um, a PWM signal. And again, you can alter that. There are controls for setting the pulse width of that signal, which is rather handy for testing um, EM displays, um, uh, PWR, uh, LED displays, etc. Between that and the scope, you could check how a capacitance affects the output of very narrow um, pulse rate. Problem I've had quite a few times thinking about it. Some of the waveform shapes, uh, triangle there, sawtooth, some of them I'm not even familiar with, so that's going to take some reading up. But basically, they've just put everything but the kitchen sink in there. Step waveforms, uh, sawtooth the other way. I'll just keep going through them. You can see on the score what you're getting out. I, I haven't got the trigger set properly on the scope. I was just doing a quick check, see if I can improve that. Right, that's better. Somewhere in here, there's a winner. That's um, white noise, would you believe? I've got the scope set at a very high frequency, so it looks. But when you lower the frequency down, there you go. Um, that's pretty much white noise, which is good. Ah, uh, there you go. You can pretend you're in a, a hospital. You just need a beep noise, and uh, you can uh, pretend you're monitoring somebody's heartbeat. I guess with that, and so it goes on. At some point, you run out of standard waves that they've put in. Look, that's an AM radio, FM radio, and they have fifty arbitrary waveforms after that. I mean, I, there's no way I could possibly cover them all in here. As you can see, that FM, they're actually modulating it with something. So there's, there's kind of something for everybody in there. Um, I'm going right up in frequency here, right up the top end of my uh, 100 meg scope. Uh, you're not looking at 100 meg there, I might add. Um, at that full frequency uh, everything looks like a sine wave basically because that's the, you uh, if you've got a hundred meg bandwidth that's it you can look at sine waves at a hundred meg you can't look at square waves at a hundred meg there's the b channel and as you can see it's completely independent from the a channel so any setups you do while you're in the b channel are different to the a channel you can see i've gone there to a sine wave on the b channel i'm gonna disconnect go back to the a channel and i'm still where I was originally, which is rather handy. And so there it is, lightweight, not really expensive, um, and a really nice display that, that works at all angles as well. It's, you know, some LCDs, not so good round, round the side. Um, if you're looking at this, look at that last digit there that, that gives you the, uh, how fast, how the, the fr highest frequencies you can use Obviously, you go for the lower ones, then the cost goes down. But I have to say, I quite like it. Uh, just a reminder there that uh, turn things on and off at the front panel. You retain your settings. Turn them off at the back panel. You don't. Okay. I should imagine the power consumption when it's on the standby is next to nothing. So I think that's quite a, a nice um, addition to the uh, workshop. I think it's very good. As usual, if you found this useful, please subscribe to the video channel. Have a look at the blog. I'm going to provide you with some more information in just a moment.